Hey there, friends. My name is Desiree, AKA Mama Friendly, and I'm trying something a little different this year when it comes to our homeschooling. All of the main information is gonna be found in the very first video of this series, which I'll link up here in case you've missed it. But the Cliff's Notes version is that I've been homeschooling my son his entire life. He's nine years old and on the autism spectrum, he has nonverbal autism along with a few other medical diagnoses. My son also has a complete and absolute undying love for all things Disney, much like his mama. So this year I thought it would be fun to give our unit studies a little bit of a Disney twist. So every two weeks this year we're going to start a new unit study based on a Disney ride, movie, character, etc. We're going to be doing our academic work around that theme, but also at least one cooking activity and at least one art activity. So in these videos, I wanna show you guys some of the things that we do to fit the theme. And I have a Pinterest board pertaining to each of the themes. And so along with every single one of these videos, there's going to be a link in the description box to that particular theme's Pinterest board. So make sure that you check those out because I am only showing you some of the things that we're getting into every week, but the board is going to have more activities and also activities for kids of different ages and different abilities. So with all that being said, let's get into our theme. We've got a color by number for Aladdin, which is kind of like what we did for Mickey, but for Mickey, it was a lot simpler. This is pretty complicated, so we'll see if we can follow along. Let's do blue. For blue, we need all the number one. You see number one? See, one, 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 one. You gotta do all that, one, 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 one. Here, this is your job. One, one, one. Look at that! It's Aladdin! Good job! Alright friends, the time has come to discover where we can find our heroes all over the Disney World parks. So I'm going to start off with Magic Carpets of Aladdin and this is our must-do ride every time we go to the Magic Kingdom. It's one of my son's favorites. This is sort of a spinner, kind of like Dumbo except that you can also tilt the carpets forward and back. So it goes up and down if you're sitting in the back and the people in the front control the tilt action. There's also a camel that uh, sits outside, a big camel that sprays the crowd. Whenever you see a puddle on the floor, you should always suspect something's going on there. There's the culprit. And then there's also this guy who likes to spray the ride goers. So you can always tell who's new here by the ones that stay at around mid-level when, the, when they're approaching this camel. They always get a shot of water to the ear. So that is our very first way that you can find Aladdin at the Disney parks. And I'm gonna have links to all these videos that I'm showing you here in the description box below in a playlist so you can watch them all in full at your leisure. Pre-COVID, you could also meet both Jasmine and Aladdin right behind the Magic Carpet ride in the Agrabah Bazaar. I'm not sure if those meet and greets are still happening with the new COVID protocols, but it's worth a look. If you're already at the ride, you could probably even see them from your ride vehicle if they're out. So this video is from one of my favorite Disney vloggers, Justin Scard. He's actually at Disneyland Paris. This video is from 2016, so I don't know if this attraction is still around, but there is apparently a walkthrough Aladdin attraction at Disneyland Paris that is extremely unique because it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And as you can see, the theming is pretty spectacular. So I definitely recommend you watch this video for yourself. How cool is this, huh? You can actually look out Aladdin's window and see the palace and all of Agrabah below him. That is so cool. I never would have known that this even existed if I hadn't been doing research for this video. So I'm pretty happy that I came across this. Definitely bucket list goals. If you're interested in meet and greets, the Morocco Pavilion is a great place to run into both Jasmine and Aladdin. And speaking of, if you want to see Jasmine specifically, there is a princess character meal that you can do at 
Akershus, Akershus, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's the restaurant in Norway. You can have breakfast with a bunch of princesses and Jasmine is one of them. Or if character meals are your thing, Cinderella's Royal Table is another option at the Magic Kingdom. However, the princesses there tend to rotate, so it's kind of a matter of luck whether you're going to run into Jasmine at Cinderella's Castle or not. It's time for our Aladdin themed art activity and this is going to be very simple but it's also something that's going to allow a lot of creativity in the decorating and also in what comes after. So I have here some gold plastic plates, some gold metallic duct tape, and some stick on jewels. I'm going to have all of these materials linked in the description box below. First things first, a grown-up, namely me in this case, is going to cut the base off of the bowl and that's going to be the top of our genie's lamp. We're going to use our metallic tape to tape two bowls together to make the lamp shape and we're also going to use the tape to make the spout of the lamp as it were. You can use the tape to kind of hinge the bit that was cut off onto the top so that the lamp can open and shut. After your lamp is complete, you're going to use your stick-on jewels to decorate. You could also use paint if you'd like, maybe some cool markers. And if you have kiddos that are good at writing or maybe they want to tell you in case they can't write themselves some wishes, you can put your wishes into the genie's lamp. More mature kiddos can even talk about turning those wishes into goals, making plans for how to make those wishes come true and so on. So this is very simple in terms of construction, but as you can see, the activity is very easy to have grow with your child. We're going to make Aladdin's Agrabah Love Cake and I actually got this recipe from a Healthy Treats Disney Princess Cookbook. I'll have it linked below in case you want to check it out. There's a lot of naturally gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan recipes and this one happens to be one of them. It's gluten-free and vegetarian. So we're starting with our ingredients. We need 6 tablespoons of softened butter. I'm going to use coconut oil. 6 tablespoons of olive oil. 2 thirds of a cup of sugar a third of a cup of swerve or monk fruit, we're gonna use monk fruit here, five large eggs, a cup of Greek yogurt, but I'm gonna use this cup of Ziggy's coconut-based yogurt. I'm using the vanilla cinnamon flavor because I thought it would go well with everything else. We need two tablespoons of rose water, I'll have that linked below as well, two teaspoons of ground cardamom, two and a quarter cups of blanched almond flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a pinch of salt. We're also gonna need some extras for the syrup, but we'll talk about those ingredients later. For now, we're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees, and as you can see, I've got a springform pan. It's a 10-inch pan. I'm also lining the bottom with parchment paper so that the cake does not stick. So now that the pan is ready, I'm setting it aside, and I'm gonna take a large bowl and in here, I'm going to combine my six tablespoons of coconut oil, or you could use butter, like I said, your six tablespoons of olive oil, two thirds of a cup of sugar, one third of a cup of monk fruit. And we're going to mix this all together until it's creamy. It's going to take about a minute. Next, we're going to add in each of our five eggs individually and make sure to completely whisk in each one before adding the next. Now we can whisk in our yogurt until the mixture is fluffy and using a spatula, we're gonna stir in our rose water and our cardamom. Mm -hmm. 
Our last step for the cake is to add our dry ingredients. So we're going to add our almond flour, baking powder, and salt and fold to combine. At this point, we want to pour our batter into our prepared cake pan and we're gonna bake it 30 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. You want to let the cake cool for 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to shell some pistachios that we can chop up as a garnish on the top and we can also work on our syrup for our cake. For the syrup, we need a third of a cup of orange juice, a half cup of honey, another tablespoon of rose water, and then you have the option of using crushed pistachios or edible rose petals or both for a garnish. So to make the syrup, we're gonna heat our orange juice and our honey in a medium saucepan over medium heat until it reaches a boil. Lower the heat to medium low and let it simmer for about five minutes. Remove from the heat and stir in the rose water. Once the cake and syrup have cooled, you can use a wooden skewer or a fork to prick holes all over the cake an inch or so apart. You can pour the syrup all over the cake now and allow it to cool for about another hour or so so that you can decorate the top if you choose and cut into it and enjoy. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. I thought that was gonna be super weird, but it's really good. Oh yeah, that's really good. <laughs> All right, friends, that's gonna do it for our Aladdin homeschool theme. And I had so much fun with this one. Our craft was a really big hit. I actually did not anticipate my son enjoying himself with this as much as he did, but um, he really, really liked it. I mean, you can't go wrong with stickers, am I right? And especially when they're these cool, funky 3D jewels. I thought he might like it, but I was pleasantly surprised at just how much. The recipe, also a huge surprise. Rose water, cardamom, these are not things that I'm used to working with. In fact, all I've ever seen about rose water on cooking shows is how easy it is to get wrong and how easy it is to overwhelm your recipe but I was shocked at how delicious that cake was. So here's the book that I got the recipe from. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna have it linked in the description box below. There's a lot of really great um, recipes in here. And a lot of them, like I said, are naturally gluten-free already. So that's a great relief for me as somebody that's always having to adapt recipes to make them fit our lifestyle. Um, so yeah, go check it out if you're on a similar journey as we are. In any case, I would love for you to let me know what your favorite activity that we did this week was and if there's any that you're looking forward to doing with your own kiddos. Make sure you check out the Pinterest board that I have linked in the description box. And remember, as always, just because we're done with the Aladdin theme for now doesn't mean that I'm not always looking for more activities and crafts and recipes that I can add to the Pinterest board. So it's always changing and evolving in case we come back around and decide to do it again. There's something new for everybody. And I try my best to always make sure to include activities for kiddos of all ages and all abilities. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope that you will please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.